Uh, let's go ahead and get airborne. We got an hour to talk about trading uh, the Death Star. And folks, if unless you fell and hit your head today, uh, it is absolutely one of the best performing stocks uh, today. And uh, I predicted a year, two years ago that what happened to the stock today was going to happen. And I have even more uh, predictions about what's going to happen to this stock. Just a fantastic uh, run it has been. Uh, if you're not a Star Wars nerd like uh, like my kids, what's the Death Star, right? It's part of Star Wars, but this big honking, uh, it's no moon, it's the Death Star, but this this big ship that the, uh, you know, well, I guess the bad guys or the good guys, depends on which side you're on, uh, built couple teenagers in a broken down ship kind of blew it up. Everybody thought it was, uh, you know, done for, and then it emerged bigger uh, and stronger. That's the stock we're going to talk about. No, you can't buy shares on the Death Star, but you can buy something pretty damn close. Uh, I took these screenshots uh, this afternoon at 2 p.m. Uh, with our current uh, members in the service. Amazon, look at the first line. Amazon synthetic stock, uh, for contract, look at this, out to January 2021, 2022, uh, today's profit loss, $62,000. Total of $893,000 uh, out of bill. Also took this, look at this, Arthur, uh, up $101,000 in Amazon. James, up seventy-eight grand in Amazon. Dennis, Wiz, latest update on my Amazon synthetic call for June 21 expiry, up 110 on one contract. So this is insane. Uh, uh, Scotty, uh, Amazon, up 11 grand on one contract. Thanks for the idea. I guess you guys are kind of figuring out maybe what stock we're talking about uh, in a couple minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get airborne though, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a old, I, I'm not going to say old, I'm a former Navy fighter pilot. Uh, so trading if you think about it as a form of combat, somebody's going to win and somebody's not. Somebody's going to, I mean, you lose in a trade, you get to go home that night. Uh, me, I lost. Uh, wife and kids got a flag and, you know, a mo memorial service, and that's about it. So trading is a form of combat. So let's stick with that theme for a couple minutes here, because I want to ask you a quick question. Which fighter aircraft would you rather fly? Take a look at that. First of all, looking at that makes me kind of cringe a little bit. And I'm, I'm an old guy. I, I trained in uh, what we call steam gauges. Look at that. It looks like a locomotive, right? Big uh, steam gauges. Folks, this is the cockpit of an F-4 Phantom. Over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit. The pilot would spend a lot of time what we call heads down. Look at that. Instead of looking at it, enemy aircraft or surface air missiles or uh, AAA, right? Anti-aircraft artillery. The pilot, this was a very labor intensive uh, aircraft. You know how labor intensive it was? They needed another dude to sit in the back to actually just run the radar. So way, 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 way too much. So would you rather fly that or that? Two flat panel displays, that's it. Anybody see any steam, steam gauges in this cockpit? Of course you don't. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the F-35, the Lightning, the Joint Strike Fighter. We, we call this jet the Wonder Woman jet. It cannot be seen by radar. No radar currently on the face of this planet can see the F-35 when it's doing the Lord's work. We actually call it the Wonder Woman jet. I'm old enough to have watched Wonder Woman cartoons. I'm okay with my sexuality to admit that, but... <laughs> Uh, when the pilot looks down between his legs or to the left or to the right, he doesn't see aircraft. He doesn't see his legs. You know what he sees? The ground, the threats, the aircraft actually generates. Look at this. Hey, this is a threat right here. And this aircraft is so smart, folks, that it actually limits the amount of data that it shows the pilot. In the old days, the picture I just showed you, fuel, hydraulics, electric, you don't need to know that stuff if everything's fine. So the jet's smart enough to sit there and go, everything's fine. I'm not going to keep showing him everything's fine. I'll only show him or her when there's a problem, right? So here's what we need to do. Silence your electronic nicotine because you've never heard what I'm about to tell you. My promise to you folks is to give you an up-to-date intelligence brief because you got to know what's going on, showing you the only stock you need to own and also a good sub to trade 
in case this stock is a little expensive for you because it, it, it certainly is not cheap, but guess what? We'll show you a good substitute to potentially trade. Okay, quick intro folks. My name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign's Wiz. Flew the Hornet for the United States Navy for about 15 years. Graduated uh, from the Navy Fighter Weapons School known as Top Gun and also flew 44 combat sorties over uh, Iraq. What's that have to do with trading? Absolutely everything. It has so much to do with trading. I took everything that I learned flying a fighter jet, being disciplined, having a strategy, implementing contingency plans. So I applied this to all my trade with incredible and I actually got picked up by one of the I was like Eddie Murphy in trading places. I went from being a little old retail trader to the big leagues, essentially. And it was, I had an absolute blast. So the, like I said, I was, you know, you don't join the Navy to get rich. You join the Navy to serve your country, right? But I was always interested uh, in finance, always interested in potentially making some money. So I applied everything I was learning as a fighter pilot, being disciplined, managing risk, contingency planning, and it worked incredibly well. Like I said, I popped up on the radar of one of the largest options trading firms in the world, headquartered right there in the Chicago Board of Trade, right there. Uh, and then the, hold on, let me move this over to here. Ran a hedge fund, uh, helped build a hedge fund when I was up there, and then uh, also built a retail uh, brokerage called Options House. It was absolutely low. Yeah, I got an uh, audio low thing. Hang on a second, folks. My, my headset is going out here. Let me see if I can switch to my computer audio. Hang on one second. You guys hear me? Can uh, you hear me better than my headset failing right now? Okay, good. My apologies, man. I pre-flighted my headset before uh, jumping on here, but it wasn't uh, too good. Okay, good. My apologies, folks. Uh, quick, up in Chicago, I was a managing director of strategy for Peak Six Investments about a two and a half billion dollar volatility arbitrage firm and was also the founder and CEO of what we call the Options News Network. It was called ONN TV. We were essentially the CNBC uh, for options. Yeah, you know, John, I know John and Pete Najarian pretty well from my time in Chicago and they kind of do a, 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 the best job they can on CNBC talking about options. But back in the day, the Options News Network, man, I was I was all options 24 seven and we grew from just essentially me starting the company to over 80,000 folks in, uh, in under a year. It was just an absolute blast. Um, I also do some charity work uh, down in Broward County on the Sheriff's Advisory Council. Unfortunately, I lost a sister to a drunk driver. Uh, so I spent a lot of time working with Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And then also recently I started a foundation called the Top Gun uh, fighter foundation uh, we need to we need to end or prevent veteran suicide folks uh, uh, when, when I tell you this stat uh, you're gonna be shocked 22 veterans uh, a day uh, kill themselves it's 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 horrific I've lost more friends uh, home uh, than I did abroad and I'm, I'm gonna fight it I had a buddy come, uh, he was a FedEx pilot, wife and four beautiful daughters. He put a bullet in his head uh, about a year or two ago. And then a, another friend about six months ago also took his own life. Um, so I'm fighting, I'm fighting folks. Do me a favor, uh, you know, thank you for your service is a, is a nice, uh, it, it's nice, do me a favor and put a comma, put a comma after that. Thank you for your service. Uh, do you need any help? Are you okay? Um, is there anything I can do? Because uh, right now, especially with COVID, the VA sucks. The government uh, is awful. 
uh, to veterans. Donald Trump's done a better job than previous presidents to try and fix the VA, but it's a disgrace. So I don't want to talk about too much about that, but just know that uh, I uh, am trying to give back. I'm trying to put the ladder down to uh, to help my my former brothers and sisters out. Okay, let's go. Important stuff we need to talk about. I mean, that was important, uh, but let's let's get airborne here. Uh, I'm this this might shock some of you, but it probably won't. Okay, but let let me try. Wall Street's lying to you. Now I know half the room probably just said duh, and the other half said uh oh. Well, anybody ever hear from somebody on Wall Street, right? The smart money. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. Don't you know you you have to right. Exactly. You have to diversify. Diversification is important. You must diversify. Blah, 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 blah. It's a lie. Do you know why you've been told to diversify since day one of you investing? That dude. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you hear the word broker, whether it's a stock broker, a real estate broker, a yacht broker, it means commission. If you've ever seen the movie Wall Street or uh, Boiler Room or Wolf of Wall Street, they get paid based on how much you trade. They want you in as many stocks. ET they want you in everything because the more you're in, the more money they make. Well, is there zero cost brokers now? They make money on order flow. Look at the movies, folks. The movies are based on reality. All right, fellas, pick up the phone, start calling the little old ladies in tennis shoes and get them into this stock, get them into that stock. Churn, it's the practice is called churn. Churn their accounts. Hi, Mrs. Smith. This is Matt Buckley calling from whatever brokerage. Get into this stock, right? So, guess what? Diversification, ladies and gentlemen, is stupid. What? Don't listen to me, listen to this guy. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. Folks, if you know what you're doing and you're looking at a good stock or ETF, are you going to listen to some cheesy dude with a Bolex and a knockoff Armani churn you in about 50 other stocks? Or Stop. Diversification is stupid and it's for people who don't know what they're doing right <laughs> the only stock you need to be in for the rest of your life is amazon now i know for the diversification crowd in this room you're probably sitting there going this does not compute must diversify sit back and listen first of all a picture's worth a thousand words show me one company in the history of markets that looks like this. Absolutely not Tesla. Anybody see on the screen what the most important word is? Revenue. Tesla, ladies and gentlemen, is technically cash broke. It's a momentum stock right now. It's the tulips. <laughs> it, it, it is, it's left reality, folks. Amazon has it. It actually makes money and it makes things. And there's a huge barrier to entry for Amazon. I have a nice Porsche. Guess what? Porsche is coming out with a, a car. Folks, we can talk Tesla, more Tesla later. Tesla ain't Amazon. It's not even close. Don't listen to me. I mean, these, like I said, these are my folks, man. I, well, I'm not going to sit here and, and pump this stuff up. These people were printing. Somebody pull up the after hours quote right now on Amazon. We'll talk about what happened today. Uh, with Amazon, but it is insane, right? Absolutely insane. Now, now, before I sit and sing the praises of just buy Amazon, it's the only stock you need to know. I'm a fighter pilot, I'm an options trader. So I look at what are the potential risks of trading a solo stock, just a stock by its one stock. Anybody ever hear of the company called Lehman Brothers? Anybody hear of Bear Stearns? Well, the bald dude on CNBC that uh, uses an air horn and a cowbell has heard of Bear Stearns. 
two day, you know, Bear Stearns at 70 or $67 is a steal. You're an idiot if you don't buy Bear Stearns. Two days later, it was at zero. Good job, Jim Kramer. How about pets.com? How about Enron? Folks, the graveyard of stocks that have gone to zero is packed. But guess what? What's, what's the one common theme in just these four examples? I could sit here for the next eight hours and list the stocks that have gone to zero. I won't. But here's the common theme. What did Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers own? Nothing. They owned air. Hell, they didn't even own the sign on the building that the dudes took off. It was, it was all air, folks. What did Pets.com own? Pets.com and a stinky, smelly sock. What about Enron? Folks, they didn't even own the building they were in. They were a middleman of electricity. It's, it was, it was it's shocking, some of these things. Can somebody tell me about Amazon? What do they own? Everything. You ever see an Amazon fulfillment center? About five, six years ago, I used, full disclosure, I flew for FedEx for about 10 months. I hated it. I went to American. Oh, and 9-11 was my first and last day at work at American Airlines. Different story. But at FedEx, folks, I still had some buddies there about five, six years ago. A friend of mine called. He's like, dude, just talk to a, a buddy of mine over in corporate finance. Uh, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, leased five jets. I'm like, oh, he's going to do it. He's going to build his own FedEx and Amazon. He's, he just quietly in the background did all of that stuff, folks. Anybody here of AWS? About 10 years ago, Amazon Web Services was like a loss leader. Now it's about the size of Microsoft. Amazon Air, AWS, their satellite initiatives. It's insane. What happened today in the news? We'll talk about it in a couple of seconds. But folks, Amazon owns stuff. About two, three months ago, Amazon copyrighted Amazon Pharma, pharmacy. My prediction, you can write this down. Two, uh, two th to three years from now, there will but not be a CVS or a Walgreens. They will be out of business and they will be gone. You push a button on your phone, in about 45 minutes to maybe a half an hour, an Amazon drone will be dropping off your prescription. It'll hover right in front of your face, take a screenshot of your face to make sure you're the one getting the right prescription, and it'll fly away. Think I'm crazy? Nope. What's another risk to Amazon? That dude. The government. Wiz, I remember two and a half, three years ago, Donald Trump woke up or didn't go to bed, depends on what you believe about the guy, grabbed his cell phone and started tweeting about Amazon. Jeff Bezos, Washington Post, uh, you know, oh my God, and Amazon is screwing the post office, it's destroying the post office. Ah! He took a flamethrower at Amazon. You know what happened? Stock went down a little bit. Then Amazon kind of peeked its head above the trench and said, no, that wasn't so, that dude's a lot of smoke. Wasn't any fire to that, really. He did it again recently, about, what, four weeks ago with the whole ballots and Amazon still screwing. Folks, absolutely nothing. So, whiz, but the FTC and maybe the Department of Justice want to break up the company. I'm old enough, ladies and gentlemen, to remember Standard Oil. I'm old enough to remember IBM, Microsoft. I'm old enough to remember AT&T. Folks, any time, any time, the United States government starts poking around like, you know what? You guys might be a monopoly. Let's look into it. The quickest amount of time for the government to render a decision in my lifetime against a company was five years. The longest was 15 years. Does anybody in this room believe that Amazon will be broken up? Or let me ask this first. Does anybody believe in this, in this room believe that uh, Jeff Bezos would spend every penny of his fortune on attorneys? It's not going to happen. And here's the funny part, is if the government ever in my lifetime got around to breaking up Amazon, you do understand that the parts would be worth more than Amazon currently is. Amazon Air, folks, like I predicted six years ago, will be bigger than FedEx and UPS combined. Amazon Web Services is taking over Microsoft, essentially. So I kind of sit here and go, Please break up Amazon. It would be, it would, if they broke up Amazon, folks, 
it would create copies in all these places that they picked it up. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's comical. So that's why I call it the Death Star. It's like Donald Trump tried to blow it up a little bit, and it, it, you know, if you strike me down, I'll, I will rise stronger. But those are the threats, folks. And I will be honest with you. I like to tell my members at Top Gun Options that I wear two suits. I wear a flight suit, and I'll tell you how I feel as an American. What's going on in the country with this? I think Amazon's a disgrace. I think it's a monopoly. 300 workers up in like Long Island or something like that at the height of the COVID crisis went on strike. They're like, dude, we don't even have PPE, personal protection equipment. Our, our, you're risking our lives. They fired them. I was like, oh my God, that's horrific. That ain't the way to make money, folks. So the other suit I wear at Top Gun Options is a $10,000 Armani, which of course I'm joking about because if I did, I'd kick my own rear end for wearing something. Else. But my point is my other suit at Top Gun Options is Gordon Gecko. I think it's fantastic they fired those 300 people. There's other people that are dying and out of work and would love that job and pay them half that you were paying the people you fired. I think it's fantastic they're a monopoly. Uh, about a month ago, uh, the Wall Street Journal broke a report that said Amazon was like doing business development with a lot of small companies who were innovating new things, met with them and said, oh, wow, that's neat stuff. We'll get back to you. And then went and built it on their own. Flight suit? That's a disgrace. Jeff Bezos is a disgusting human being. Armani, I'm going to buy Amazon with both hands and print money. <laughs> so if you, uh, to use a Gordon Gecko line from the movie Wall Street, if you want a friend, get a dog. If you have a conscience in your trading, you're probably not going to make a lot of money. Now I get it. There's, uh, I could buy stuff that the uh, green plant. I, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. So if you want to make money, this is how you do it. But I will point out to you, especially in my live trade brief. So I'm going to be honest with you. Like, hey, man, this just doesn't sit right with me. I don't care. I got a wife. I got a kids. I got a mortgage. And I'm printing money at Amazon. Okay. Now that I sufficiently totally destroyed the idea of just trading one name, actually, I didn't. Um, guess what? What are the benefits to just trading one name, to just uh, Amazon, for example? Folks, you're trading that, that name. And you potentially profit no matter which direction Amazon goes, up, down, or sideways. With options, I make money up, down, or sideways. You become, it, you're focused. All Your life is simplified. The only thing you are focused on is the news and events that impact Amazon. Instead of a ton of different stocks and ETFs, you become an expert in Amazon, reducing time spent on other positions. I love my, I'm down here in God's waiting room, Boca Raton. One of my members, uh, he owns a, 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 there's two of them. His brother uh, is a plastic surgeon in Boca, the underachieving family. They're both doctors. Uh, and the one's an orthopedic surgeon. The dude works eight, 10, 12 hour days, office hours, surgeries with, he, I, I forget. Oh, plastics. I didn't have plastic surgery. She shall remain nameless. Anyway, uh, dude. You trade, I trade, I, you know, I manage my brother's account too. C can you meet and kind of, can we talk trading? I didn't, I don't know a lot about options. You got it, Doc. I meet Doc in Starbucks, Stan Starbucks. Anyway, met him in Starbucks years ago, two years ago, maybe, before all of the world imploded. He boot, I'll never forget, he powered up his laptop in Starbucks. As soon as he logged into his brokerage account, he, he slid the computer around towards me. Thank God he's a doctor because I passed out and I hit my head. The dude, the doc, had this. You ready for this, folks? He had 33 positions in his portfolio. I'm a professional, man. At the height of my career, five, uh, ten positions. And I did it 24 hours a day. Are you kidding me? 33. As I regained consciousness, he started to try and brief me. Well, I think that's a pot stock. I don't even know what that is. All right, next one. Uh, I forget what it is, but it's down a lot. I'm just waiting for it to go up to get out of it. I'm like, what did you just, I mean, it was all, I'm, if I had like the third name or stock, I'm like, doc, just shut up. No, stop. The dude has, if you, 
folks, why would you do that? Right? Simplify your trading cockpit, ladies and gentlemen, by trading one name, which, as I'm slowly repeating myself, isn't one name. Amazon is about 10 different names underneath it. Now, if you're sitting there going, wait a and this past 25 minutes has been fantastic. I agree. I'm still a diversification person. I can't, I can't. Wall Street embedded a chip in my head, or Tesla did, or Elon Musk put that chip in your head. Must diversify. Okay, well, must diversify. First of all, an Amazon is what? A $3,400 stock, $3,500 stock. Here's Uncle Wiz's tip. It'll be, by my birthday, subtle plug, New Year's Eve, it'll be a $4,000 stock, maybe even before my birthday. Wiz, I can't, freaking $4,000 stock, I can't afford that. Well, for the diversification challenged people in the audience and the holy crap, that's expensive people, what do we also trade? What do I also trade in this service? XLY. XLY is the consumer discretionary ETF. Why would I trade that? Because folks, what is the number one holding of the XLY, Amazon. So folks, this serves as a good proxy for Amazon. If you can't, man, I can't afford one uh, Amazon contract. XLY is a pretty damn good substitute. I've had people start in this solo Amazon service, just kind of trade my XLY stuff, build up a, a, enough coin to get into a single. It's so funny because people are like, you have one contract in Amazon? <laughs> yeah, you do, and you might have a couple million bucks, right? So, for all the diversification challenged people, look at what else is in the XLY. Am uh, well, Home Depot, been on a tear lately. Everybody's stuck in their home prison doing stuff at home. I've been doing it. We do the pool, the barbecue, the uh, fantastic. McDonald's, Nike, can't stand Nike. Starbucks, can't stand Starbucks. Lowe's, Bookings, TJX, Target. The wife and my daughter, Keely, live in Target on a daily basis, GM. So if you're a diversification challenge person, you get a pretty damn good substitute of Amazon with a little love of XLY. So how do we target Amazon and XLY for max profit? I'm gonna tell you. We establish what I call a base position. We can hop in that F-35, fly out into the future. In, in the options world, we can go two, three years out into the future and establish a, a beachhead, a base position with what we call a tactic called synthetic stock. I'm not a billionaire. I can't buy a thousand shares of Amazon or a hundred shares. Guess what? One contract in options world equals a hundred shares. Or I can do a tactic called a long call diagonal. I'll teach you all of these things, folks. If you just kind of know that options exist, that's enough, you're, you're a lump of clay and I will mold you in a steely-eyed options trader. If you know what a call and a put is, you're, you are a Jedi master. So after we, I did this today, I established at two, two o'clock today, every Monday at two o'clock is our solo Amazon brief live. And I just posted the replay. I sent out a text alert and an email alert uh, from the brief. So after we put on our base position, then what do we do? Folks, we trade the heck out of the front months. Amazon and XLY are going up. Okay, well, let's do some bullish spreads or even just buy some calls. Uh-oh, Amazon and XLY are going down. We will trade some bearish spreads or sell some front month calls. What if it's just not doing anything, man, which is rare? If it's just trading sideways, we can do a tactic called an iron condor. So that's how we do it folks. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to bring up my solo Amazon account and show you what we've been doing. Let's go 2300. My login. Yep. I, absolutely. I will answer some questions towards the end. I love folks. This is the, the folks that are in solo. I've literally changed lives. People are like, I, I, I never, thought about not diversifying. And, and once you look behind the curtain and see Wall Street for what it is, they would, one of the reasons I left Chicago was because it was gross. People would push their own mother in front of a bus to make a buck. That ain't me, man. 
Um, and after making it on Wall Street, it was time for me to do what I call put the ladder down. This is, it ain't rocket surgery, folks. Um, it, it's, it's not. Let's look at, look at the year-to-date chart of Amazon. This is going to be sad to say, but folks, the COVID crash, here it is right here, which I predicted to the day, has been the best thing ever to happen to Amazon. Horrible to say. 100 and what, 80,000 Americans dead? The COVID crash put competitors out of business, literally has destroyed businesses. And who's been the uh, benefactor? Amazon, man. I saw a post the other day. It's like, okay, once we get out of lockdown, can't we shut down Target, Walmart, and Amazon for like three months so we can get other American businesses back? It's too late, man. The genie's out of the bottle. Again, me in a flight suit. It's heartbreaking. It's devastating. I got buddies doing restaurants in Fort Lauderdale that are going bankrupt. We can go loot. We can go riot. Can't go to my buddy's Italian restaurant. I should just go say I'm having a peaceful protest and order the bruschetta. It's a disgrace. Anyway, I'll get on with my soapbox. My, points being, my point being is Amazon's not going to look back, folks. What happened today? Today, folks, this. Oops. Where'd that go? Share screen. Share. Right here. Let me move this over. What happened today with Amazon? Amazon wins FAA approval for prime air drone delivery fleet. I told you this was, you didn't tell me, I told my members and they listened. Years ago, about a year and a half to two years ago, I said Amazon will be delivering packages via drone short. They told us. Here's my next prediction. And about a year or two years ago, Amazon had a little competition. You know what they did? They had their best. You ever see those Domino's commercials where the guy like is folding boxes? He's like, and they're counting them on the scoreboard. Like old Roy here from Tampa can box, you know, make really. Amazon did the same thing. They got like old Roy, their best human. And in one hour, the best human in Amazon could put 200 packages in a box type of thing and get them going. Jeff Bezos came out with the, I forget the name of it, the, the Robo 5000. Jeff Bezos, the Robo 5000, in one hour did 700 packages. So if you're Jeff Bezos, what do you do? You look around at these carbon breathing math units and you get rid of them. But Jeff Bezos, being the smart guy that he is, did what with them? Well, I'm going to give you a $10,000 severance. Oh, that's nice because you're getting rid of tens of thousands of Amazon employees. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, for the $10,000 severance, uh, you need to go out and put an Amazon Prime magnet on your car and you're going to deliver packages for it as an independent contract. Brilliant. Here's a prediction I'm going to make right now. I got the drones right. Here's what I'm going to also get right. And let me give myself a little time, two years. I'd say a year, but two years. There will not be a human being driving that Amazon Prime. Humans are cranky. They need to go to the bathroom. They need to eat. They have a work day. Those vans will be driverless. You will get a text that says your Amazon package is here. You'll go out. You'll enter the pin that they text you, and a little door will open on the side, and your package will be sitting right there. It's a fact that that's going to happen. Speaking of Tesla, Tesla's already making driverless 18-wheelers. You ever drive on Interstate 95 or I-10 or one of your interstates at like 11 at night? You see a rest stop? Rest stops, those truckers, they're like uh, FAA pilots, man. They're like an airline pilot. They have crew rest requirements. They can only drive for so many hours a day. And guess what? Those days are over with. I'm not even going to mention, or I will mention the social uh, problem with all of this. Truckers, Amazon employees, we will have millions of workers in a couple years unemployed, replaced by technology. Again, me in a flight suit, I, 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 I'm devastated. Uh, I. I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to go super tinfoil hat theory here, but you know, you watch Arnold Schwarzenegger and the and the Terminator. I, I mean, we're everything's going to be replaced. So, 
in my flight suit, I'm going to tell you that's devastating, that's heartbreaking. America's in for uh, a lot of workers are going to be gone. As a dude who trades Amazon, I think it's freaking fantastic. How fantastic is it? Well, folks, Amazon was up over like 70 bucks. Today. Let's take a look at today's chart on Amazon. So short story long, I could not be more bullish on Amazon. However, if you just saw some of my positions in here, I'm taking the microphone. So year to date, we're up six figures in Amazon. I got my rear end handed to me a little bit at the bottom of the COVID crash because I did not, I love talking about my losses because I learned from them. There's no way in hell at the bottom here in March, I predicted the Federal Reserve was going to essentially go outside of their charter and do what they're doing right now which is clearly most of it is buying junk bonds, buying ETFs. I know for a fact they bailed out hedge funds that shall remain nameless. When the history of this COVID crash is written, you will be stunned. No, you probably won't. Stunned to know what the Treasury and the Fed has done. I know several Chicago hedge funds uh, who shall remain nameless that got – so my buddy in Lauderdale who can't open his Italian restaurant didn't get a bailout, but a, a guy whose art collection is more than the GDP of some countries got a bailout. What am I rambling about? My loss. So down here, I was bearish on XLY. The Fed jumped in and said, oh, everybody gets a trophy. So I had some losing trades on XLY. Absolutely will admit that. And then I never looked back. <laughs> it's been buy Amazon uh, and let it go. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I would not, not, yeah, exactly. Truck stops, folks, we might as well, we have 60,000 homeless vets in this country. Why don't we like build huge places on these? It, it's a thing of the past. My, my son, Matthew, who's 20 years old, he just started his junior year at Norwich here in Boca Raton, Norwich University, of course, is in Vermont. Uh, and my middle son, Jack, who just started sophomore in high school, they both want to fly fighter jets for their country. Matthew in the Marine Corps, Jack in the uh, Navy. That'll be a good family rivalry. Uh, but I warn them that they will, they are the last generation of fighter pilots. Like Knights of the Round Table, they will be gone. Amma, Amma has been. It will be drones. Two weeks ago, an F-16 fought a drone or, or an AI, a computer, and got its rear end handed to him. Okay, enough rambling. Let's talk about why, let's take a look at these two positions. Synthetic stock out to October on Amazon. XLY out to September. Okay, dude, I thought you said on the options, in the options world, you can hop in your joint strike fighter. Look at this. Up here is all the expiration dates. You could, buy, you could be bullish on Amazon by June of 2022. You ready for this? Amazon by June of 2022 will be a six- thousand dollar stock write that down and come and check in with me i might be wrong i also got amazon three thousand wrong a year ago i said amazon will be three thousand by my birthday next year december 31st of this year i got that wrong by, by august september october November. i got that wrong by five months i love all these amazon analysts now crawling out of the woodwork trying to up their price targets and catch me if you notice my bullish trades on Amazon and XLY end in September and October. Does anybody want to take a gander as to why I don't? Dude, you just said Amazon 6,000 by June of 2022. I did. I heard me. Did you hear me? Why am I not getting? So, folks, we make money here in the white. I love technical analysis, people. Somebody tell me. How many of you are allowed to trade off the left side of your chart? How many of you have a broker that says, oh, I knew the market, uh, look at it, it went, the answer is nobody. Tech, don't, don't get me started about technical analysis. So we make money here in the white, don't we? That's where you need to you know, put your thoughts forward in space and time, and then you make some money. Why am I not bullish on anything past October? You don't have to type it. Everybody's pretty smart in this room. November 4th. My prediction, folks, is we will not know who the president... Uh, actually, um, let me rephrase that. We'll know who the president of the United States is on November 4th. 
the other side will absolutely not. Last week, this is a disgrace, this woman. Hillary Clinton says Joe Biden should not concede on election night no matter what happens. She said no matter what happens. Okay, what if he wins? Uh, he doesn't concede? She, I, so ladies and gentlemen, look at this headline. Traders brace for haywire markets around presidential election, betting on a wave of market volatility straight through the inauguration, folks. Volatility markets brace for election drama like never seen before. I am going to make a prediction right now. When, I didn't say if, I said when. When November 4th rolls around, does anybody see Donald Trump standing up and going, Hey, you know what? I got my rear end handed me fair and square by Joe Biden. I'm leaving the White House, you know, a peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Does anybody see Joe Biden on November 4th in his basement going, uh, Donald Trump is what's better for America. I'm going to unite behind him. <laughs> That's not going to happen either. Markets, ladies and gentlemen, want certainty. They don't want uncertainty. And I'll tell you right now, Wall Street doesn't want a Secretary of the Treasury, Elizabeth Warren. This is going to happen. So, um, and Amazon, and I call them the Fagums, right? Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft. Those names will not, they're the only, re those names and the Fed are the reason the S&P 500 is up. They will not, not be spared the election slaughter. I'm telling you, Amazon might be down here at 3000 bucks, and I'd rather buy Amazon and get bullish on it after it pulls back and it goes up to 6000 like I predicted, okay? If you want to weather this insanity, knock yourself out. The market, ladies and gentlemen, is primed for a pullback. This is one of the most hated bull markets. I've, I've been doing this for 28 years. Now I'm aging myself. I've never... You know, back in January, we're all going to die. Now it's, well, you know, here's the macroeconomic data and here's the stock market. <laughs> the market is looking for an excuse to sell off. It's going to get it. So very long rambling answer to nobody's sure question of why aren't you bullish past October? You can't. I'm a political science man. I'm a, you, have to, you have to trade and look at politics. I love people who are like, you need to stop talking about your politics and just show me some trades. You need to not be a top and options member. If you don't follow, my God, folks, in one tweet, especially at the, with the trade war, I mean a Trump tweet about China or good news or bad news sent the markets up triple digits or down triple digits. So at the end of the day, folks, I'm going to get very, 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 very uh, tactical and not – uh, I'm just going to stick with my short-term front month uh, trades here. We did, uh, was it last week? We had a great a uh, Amazon bull put spread that made, uh, what's the date? This thing printed money. This was a, uh, this thing made 4,600 bucks last week. 100% profit. Look at this. This seems quaint. This was last Monday, folks, live. I did a bull put spread, 32.25, 32.20 bull put spread. 3225. I said, hey, by last Friday, Amazon would be above 3225. It's at 3450. After hours, is at 3460. That was a fantastic trade last week. We've been having a blast uh, in the solo uh, Amazon uh, service, and you can too. But folks, please, even with all this type of stuff, this is great news. So when, not if, we get this election freak out in the market, I am going to be sitting here like a vulture. I will be up on my perch. I'm going to move to mostly cash going into October, and I'm going to sit here and watch. What's the worst thing that happens? You ready for this? The worst thing that happens is I'm wrong, right? First of all, fantastic being wrong because that'll be good for America. Whiz, you were wrong. Trump conceded. What an honorable man, and he's going to go build a Trump Tower in North Korea. Yay! Markets go up. Anybody see that? No. Joe Biden. It's so I don't. I love telling my TGO members uh, I want to be wrong on something because when I use those words, I want to be wrong about this. It usually is better for America. I'm not going to be wrong, but I, let's say I am wrong. Wiz, you were wrong. 
we didn't get an election freak out. Okay. The market kept kind of, so, oh my God, folks, I missed out on a couple of points to the upside. Are you kidding me? Would I rather miss out on a couple of these or get my rear end handed to me when that happens? Okay. So at Topkin Options, the main thing that I focus on is risk management, not how much money can I make, it's how much money I can lose. I love using this, this saying, because I have to say it slowly because it's so basic. You can't make money if you're losing money. And I love telling people that like in person because they kind of look at me like, wait, is this really complicated? Oh, wait, that's kind of dumb. It isn't. I love when people are, they, they focus on the making money. And I'm like, hey, man, you can't make money if you're losing money. Okay. So I could not be more bullish on Amazon, but it's past this wall. And I call this the drink wall. E-R-I-N-C. Democrats. Russia, Iran, North Korea, China. This market has to get over that drink wall for it to go up. It's a race between the drink that I just drew, and you ready for this? A vaccine. If you're a student of politics or the market, you know the term October surprise. We are, if the president, and I'm going to stay as apolitical as I can, if Donald Trump, if the FDA, if we get a vaccine and people are getting inoculated, mark it up, Trump reelect. If we get a drink, Democrat, Russia, Iran, North Korea, China, love the way the president says China, this will happen. So I like to tell my members that whenever I draw this on the chart in the white area, if I have a question mark to the right, this is the other symbol I put up. Don't ever forget, ladies and gentlemen, that cash is a position. Cash is a hell of a trade to be in, right? Ray Dalio, world's largest hedge fund manager, back here at Davos, the beautiful people. You know what he said? Cash is trash. And he kind of giggled. I said, you're an idiot. You're trash. Two days later, the market imploded. I made millionaires at Topkin Options. If you listen to Ray Dalio, you're broke. He kind of apologized for that lately. Kind of tough, though. If you listen to Ray Dalio, January 22nd, looked at Donald Trump as he gave his Davos interview to Joe Kiernan on CNBC. And I said, I looked right into my camera to my members. I said, he's lying. I know enough people up north in a big building with five sides on it to know the man's lying. He's been briefed on this, how bad it is. And the president said, oh, I trust you, trust him. Hey, why are you even asking me about this COVID thing? Not going to happen here, whatever. I said, get out and get the cash. Buy puts on the S&P 500, get long volatility. We made about 27 millionaires. And I'm telling you, that's going to happen again. Okay, a little bit of a deviation there. But I, even though it's solo Amazon, folks, we got to have situational awareness, man. We got to know what's going on overall. Because even though it is the Death Star, the Death Star got damaged, man. They rebuilt it and it got stronger. That's the same thing that's going to happen now. Oh, and by the way, if you watch the Democratic Convention, what did you not see them do? I, got, I, I had a bad trade on Amazon during the Democratic Convention. You know why? Because I was a fool. Why were you a fool? Because I assumed that AOC, uh, what's her name, Elizabeth Warren, I assumed they were going to tell us what they were going to do with this country. Amazon, who doesn't pay a penny in corporate taxes, we're going to hit with 28%. I mean, they, they, they did a good job. They didn't tell or say anything about going after corporate America. Every other day of the week, you hear AOC, you hear Elizabeth Warren, you hear all of them say, we are going after these big Apple. Do you think stocks are going to go? You think Amazon's not going to implode a little bit when they start coming after it, saying you need to start paying 28%? to Uncle Sammy. Everybody remember Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett bought Burger King, right? And you know what he did? It was down in Coral Gables. I remember their big headquarters, Burger King. He moved it to Canada. <laughs> so get ready for all this stuff, folks. Okay, let me, uh, let, let me give you uh, uh, how you can get on board with this stuff. Because like I said, we're having a blast in what we call solo uh, Amazon, folks. It's our newest live trading service here at Topkin Options. Our, my, my briefs, I do Monday through Thursday, 
skill-based weekly options retirement portfolio. This thing is out on its own because all we trade is, you ready for it? Amazon and XL1. So here's what I'm gonna do. And again, Dave said, hey man, hook, hook, hook the brothers and sisters up with a good offer. That's it, man. For the price of a, of, of a nice bottle of wine, uh, solo Amazon, $97 a month. Why is it cheaper than my other services? You ready for this? Because we only trade Amazon. So it's a little, it's less work for me, man. So it's a hell, it, that's pretty damn cheap, okay? Topkinoptions.com slash solo dash Amazon dash monthly. Year to date, I just showed you the portfolio. It's up six digits. Wiz, every Monday at two o'clock I work. Well, guess what? 80% of our members work and can't attend. They're gonna get a time sensitive text and email alert. Here's a screenshot of one of our recent uh, XLY uh, trades right there, a bear call spread. At the same time, I press send, a text alert goes out, and an email alert goes out. I just take a screenshot of the, of the trade. That's the trade I'm doing. And then here's the risks of the trade, the profit in the trade, the probabilities. Everything gets sent out to you. And then guess what happens? It takes, uh, depending on how long the webinar is, it takes about 30, 45 five minutes to render the recording, uh, and then I post it. Some folks watch it later that day, watch it that night after the kids go to bed, help. Some people will save it to Sunday to watch, up to you. But you physically don't have to be in the brief. You can watch the replay and still get the email and uh, text alert. Here's what I'm gonna do today. Uh, I'm gonna, you need your flight manuals, man. Primary, intermediate, and advanced. These things are fantastic. Uh, options basics, basic tactics, volatility. Just, I, I, to be honest, I go back and read these things sometimes. Uh, they are 197 bucks on our homepage. If you went to my homepage and wanted to buy these manuals on their own, it's 197 bucks. So for all the political science major uh, Marines in the room, let me help you out with the math. If you're paying $97 for a month, and you're getting these manuals, which cost $197 for free, you got it, fill in the blank. You're making essentially 100 bucks. There you go, 100 bucks back in your pocket. That's, I remember my marketing team telling me this. They're like, this is what they call a can't refuse offer. I'm like, it's kind of dumb for us to do, but they're like, no, it's irresistible offer. Okay, well, there you go. You're making money already. So here's what you get in solo Amazon. Access to the solo Amazon live trade brief every Monday at 2 p.m. The text and email alerts and the free skill-based manuals. And you also get access to our uh, online forum. We call it the ready room. Folks, the ready room of a fighter squadron is where uh, um, I, you hang out before the flight, after a flight, or even if you're not flying that day. I learned more about tactics and everything in the ready room. So we have an online ready room. You get in there, hey, I got a question about this, or I want to post some intelligence, or I'm thinking about doing this trade, and anybody have any thoughts? The ready room's fantastic. It's a, it's a great interactive forum uh, to ask questions, okay? So you get access to all this stuff for the price of uh, essentially good dinner. Uh, nah, you, you bet, Jennifer, that the ready room is essentially our chat room, right? Okay, um, <laughs> Surrender, uh, this dude made 200 grand in Amazon on 20 uh, call contracts. Um, Kevin, Amazon, synthetic stock, late to enter, up 200%, he paid eight grand, it's up to 24. Uh, th this is, this is, oh, this was today as well, Doug, Still have Jan 21, 3,800 call and selling calls against it. My cost basis, look at this. His cost basis for this Amazon position is only two grand. And the call is worth $26,000. Jim bought two 2,800 Jan 21 leaps. Those leaps are those longer dated options we talked about in May. Up almost 500%. I know pigs get slaughtered, but how can I maximize more profit? You, you wanna know, look at Dennis down here. My Amazon synthetic stock for June of 2021 expiration, one contract is now up $145,000. Let me go back to Jim. Anybody wanna take a guess 
at what I told this young man. First of all, I told him, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a registered investment advisor or broker dealer. He's right. He used my own words back at me. I always say this. Pigs get slaughtered, man. If you're up 500% and you're looking for more profit, you got problems. <laughs> Especially because we are one breaking news or text alert or whatever alert uh, away from. We're playing musical chairs right now. The music's going on. I call it a hold your nose rally. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. But in the blink of an eye, this thing, can, remember, markets go down a hell of a lot faster than they go up. I'm begging you to get some puts on the S&P or the Russell and get some long VIX calls on. The VIX in the blink of an eye can be up 20, 30% and it's going to, okay? Hey, if you're interested and you're like, man, this is exactly what I need, do the annual. You can get a 25% discount today if you want to do an annual uh, membership. I'll hook you up with that. It's, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than doing the month to month. As a businessman, I want you to do the month to month for 12 months. As a bro, do the annual and you'll save some money, okay? Uh, hey, do me a favor. If you're kind of new to options or even if you know what you're doing, you think you're a Jedi master, after you purchase your solo Amazon here, there's gonna be a window that pops up that says, hey, do you want access to the full throttle training? For the love of God and all things holy, do it. Again, price of a nice dinner. What is it? We're doing it right now. Every Tuesday and Thursday night from seven to, I don't know, eight, 8.30. Kids are, you know, dinner's over with. Grab a glass of wine. Let's hang out. I do this four times a year. Once a quarter, I do eight live trade uh, training sessions at night. We've done a couple of these already. You can go watch the replays. The rest of these are going to be live tomorrow night, starting at seven. I think we're, I forget where we are in one of these, but please, 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 if you're, I'm telling you, do the training because in the live trade briefs, folks, if you're sitting there going, hey, Wiz, how do you do Amazon synthetic stock? I'm not taking the time during market hours in a live trade brief when we can be talking about positions to train. That's what a glass of wine and at night, Tuesdays and Thursdays is for. Please, please, please take the training. It will save your portfolio. Jennifer, what's a double vertical? Come to the training and I will show you. Uh, Solo Amazon, newest live trading service. It ain't 167 a month. Those are the other briefs. Solo Amazon is only $97 a month. Hey, folks, if you didn't learn anything today, well, that I failed miserably, but learn this. Please simplify your trading cockpit. If I, it's funny because I've gotten emails from new members who are like, dude, when you said, talked about the doctor and Boca, that's me. I have like 19 positions or I have 10. I do this for a living, folks, and I manage four, five portfolios at Topkin Options and two of my own personal accounts. It's a lot of work, man. Wouldn't this simplify your life? Just trading one or two names. And remember, if I'm just in Amazon, I might have synthetic stock out a couple of years. I might have a bull put spread on the front month and I might have XLY. That's three trades right there. Stay focused, folks. Please, please, please do not push it with a ton of different names and, and stuff like that. Okay. 